Um, we're still looking on the series of IGCS in geography. So in this section, we're going to be looking at coastal processes. Um, so we'll be having three lessons. So this will be the first lesson. Now in this part, we're going to demonstrate an understanding uh, of uh, the work of a sea and wind. So we're going to look at eroding, transporting, and depositing, uh, depositional processes. So there are certain keywords you just need to know. What is a coast? A coast is just the name for an area or for the area where the sea meets the land. So the area where the sea meets the land is known as the coast. Then we have the word fetch here, which is the amount of open water over which a wave has passed is called a fetch then swash which is the movement of water up the beach is a swash then backwash is the movement of water down the beach is a backwash then wave frequency is the number of waves per minute then we have velocity velocity is the speed at which the wave travels then the wave itself is the movement of wind across the surface of the sea is called a wave now let's look at the component of a wave there are two major components you need to know which is called the swash like we saw in the keywords and the back backwash now the swash is when uh, a wave moves up the beach or washes materials up the beach like um, you can see from this image so the mat the, the wave coming up the beach is a swash why uh, the wave or water that drains back into the sea is called the backwash so those are the two components then we have types of waves there are two major types of wave we have the destructive and we have the constructive waves these are the two types now um the characteristics or the difference between these two types of waves is that the Destructive wave is a high energy wave uh, leading to erosional processes along the coast. So it destroys areas within the coast. So it's a high energy wave. Why constructive wave is a low energy wave. Now, because it's a high energy wave, it has high frequency. Now, this is a low energy wave, so it has low frequency. So you can check the meaning of frequency here, where we say is the number of waves per minute. So it has high frequency, it has low frequency. Now, destructive wave have a short wavelength. So what is a wavelength? A wavelength is the distance uh, usually between, between two crests of a wave. So this is one, this is another wave. So the distance between these two crests is called the wavelength. So if you can see in a destructive wave, it has a short wavelength and it has a high height. So that means the distance from here to the trough is higher. But in a constructive wave, you find that it has a long wavelength and has a short height or low height. Now, um, in destructive wave, it has a strong backwash and a weak swash. Swash, the incoming wave is weak while the outgoing wave is strong. Now, it has a high gradient. Uh, why this? That means it, the high gradient, it has a very steep slope. Why these have a low gradient, so it has a gentle slope, and um, a constructive wave have a strong swash. So as it comes into the coast, it's very strong. So it brings around, it brings with it um, sand, shingles, and materials to to the coast. But it has a weak backswash, so it doesn't have sufficient energy to take this material it brought back, leading to deposition. So these constructive normally lead to deposition and destructive normally lead to erosion of the coast okay now um these are just diagrams depicting the two types of waves here you can see constructive wave so it has a gentle slope uh, but here uh, the beach because there is deposition of material but here you can see the materials are broken so this is actually a destructive wave so destructive wave have a higher wavelength it has a weak uh, swash and a strong backswash. 
now the wavelength is short and the distance is high here the wavelength it has a long wavelength and short height or low height and um, it has here a steep slope here is more gentle so those are just the differences now processes of erosion within the coast now so, so some coastal uh, some coastlines are suffering from coastal erosion now erosion is where the waves in the sea are wearing away the rocks at the coast so the wave in the sea here is wearing away the rocks at this coast thereby breaking them down and eroding them and destroying the, the coast now you find out that the four processes the four types of erosional processes is similar and the same to that of rivers it's just that um, there's just some few explanation or the way you present it now erosional processes are we call it the haas which is has now h is for hydraulic action so the wave the incoming wave we now make air we compress air in cracks in the rocks and uh, which is the power of incoming wave we make air uh, to, to compress air in rocks which expand and cracks and break them off so it's usually the power of the waves then the next is uh, we have corrosion which is also my s here which is also referred to as solution now is when rocks like limestones uh, can easily dissolve in the wave uh, by the seawater because seawater is quite acidic so it dissolves it and move away with it then we have the corrosion or abrasion is when waves uh, pick up loose materials and use them to grind the cliff just like some paper in the cliff of um, the sea now if you look at this diagram here uh, if i found out that students don't really understand what the cliff is but if this is the wave uh, the, the, the incoming the water uh, here then this top here is the cliff so this is the top of a cliff then uh, down here that the water attacks uh, mostly is now the base of the cliff this is the base of the cliff so once the base is attacked, it cost an undercut, then the top will be able to collapse. So we'll look at that uh, when we look at coastal features. Then next here is abrasion. Abrasion has to do with material reducing size as they hit each other. So as the materials bump into each other, they reduce in size uh, when uh, being carried or moved around by the waves. Next is what is the impact of erosion at the coast? Now, once the coastal areas is being eroded, so you can see what is happening here. Find that the roads are destroyed, vegetation will be destroyed. So most of the problem associated with erosion at the coast is that on people and the environment, is that on people there will be loss of farmland. It has negative impact on tourism. It destroys road. It damages buildings. It damages business such as coastal hotels and restaurant. Uh, cost of protection measures uh, is quite expensive then on the environment coastal erosion lead to loss of vegetation destroys the food chain loss of habitat and also destroys the landscape you can take note of that now transport how the sea transports materials or transport its load now the sea transport its load through a process called the longshore drift now transport by the coast you have that the sea carries materials such as mods and sand and shingles and these shingles are actually pebbles and stones uh, that are carried along the sea uh, is called this load now how does it move this load now the load is moved as follows one it moves up the shore why by the force of incoming wave known as the swash up the shore by swash and it moves back down the shore uh, by pool of retreating wave and the retreating wave is the backswash so as a result of that it moves along the coast by a process known as the longshore drift so usually what we're saying here is it moves if this is the material it moves up and it goes back down uh, through the normal incoming and outgoing waves known as swash and backswash but if this is a coastal area and you have a material here let's say at point a this is the material point a and we need to move this material to point b here how will this material move from point a to point b is through the process called the longshore drift 
Now, how does this long shot drift work? Now, you see, simple. Uh, it works with prevailing wind. So usually, um, this material is supposed to, the backswash, take this material back down at 90 degrees, vertically back down. Then the wave, incoming wave, comes at an angle. So the swash will now move the material up the coast at an angle. Then the back swash will take it back down vertically. The incoming wave again will now move it back at an angle, up the beach at an angle. Then back swash will take it back down. The incoming swash will move it up at an angle. Back swash will take it down vertically, straight. The incoming wave at an angle, back down. The, a back swash we take it at an, uh, uh, vertically back into the sea until this process will continue to form the zigzag movement uh, to help move it along the coast. That is the long shot drift. Now, if you are asked to present it, so you can see the mini animation here, you can see how it moves the material from point A to point B. Now, so prevailing wind cause wave approach the shore from the side, which is an angle. Now, the swash of the wave pushes the material up the beach at an angle. Then each backwash drag the material straight down following the slant of the beach. Now, as this process repeats themselves, the material is what? Gradually transported along the shore in a zigzag manner. That is known as the longshore drift. Now, that's how wave transport materials. Next is coastal deposition. Now, a process involving the load of, um, carried by the sea or materials being dropped behind by waves. Now, leading to the build up of materials on the beach or by the sea. That will lead to the formation of different landforms like coastal dunes and also beaches. So, thank you. Uh, next lesson, lesson two, we'll be looking at coastal landforms.